welcome to another Star Citizen Addicts Ex Anonymous. I'm Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, your host. Today we're going back to IAE. It's day three and it is time for the Industrial Giant. It's MISC. So if you have aspirations on becoming a cargo hauler, a miner, somebody that flies a huge ship that refuels others, and there are many more, then this is the day for you. Now, MISC has been known as an industrial manufacturer for so long that when they started making a little bit nicer and better and sleeker ships, they spun off a company called Mirai. So they'll be here today also. <laughs> so I'm kind of excited about this one and kind of already feeling like I've been here, done this before. I come to IAE every year, whether I'm playing the game or not, just so I could see anything that's new. And although there is something new to me, like the Pulse, there's nothing that's so new to me that I'm going, ooh, ah. In fact, there's some old things that I just look at and go, yeah, that needs another pass, but they're exceptional. And these are the three behemoths. I have the one in the center, which is a Star Lancer Max, which is a freelancer on steroids that ate the mushroom or drank the drink in Alice in Wonderland and became really big. It's a cool ship. It's the ship that if you want to have that hauling career, you could live on. And you could live on with friends, family, whatever. I kind of think about this ship in a way that there was a character called Meriwether on Enterprise. Yes, I know, not the best Star Trek show, but it grows on you to a point where you could accept it. Anyway, he lived on one of these cargo carriers and he talks about his life on it and they weren't so big. And, and I think of them and I think of this ship and I think that this is kind of built after that. So the Star Lancer I have on Batgirl, I'll take it out. I'll show you what it looks like. If you're into a, in between like having a military or a exploration or a mercenary, whatever it might be, you might want to start here because you make a lot of money in the industrial jobs right now in the game, whether that be mining with the ships like the Mole, which is multiplayer, or the Prospector, which will be here today, or you hand mine in caves, which is very dangerous, where you just take out the rock, there'll be something here for you today. So now I've been seeing people drop dead, not just hold the backspace, but drop dead. I know some people come here and they use the backspace to get back to wherever they started from. Maybe they're over on Hurston or over on Arc Corp, but I've been watching people just drop dead again. and. I, I think the helmet bug is back again, where if you wear your helmet into this area, there are places where you're going to walk and you're suddenly going to have no oxygen. So make sure when you go to IAE, do what I did today, get into civvies and do not wear a helmet and you should be okay. The one ship I've never seen before is this little tiny bike called the Pulse. And I think this looks pretty amazing and I might just pick one up. I, I hope you could pick it up in game because I'm not into spending money on small fighters and vehicles that you could just run a couple of cargo missions, do a few bunker runs and empty everything into a one or two CU container and then sell it and then have enough to buy one of these. Now I talked about the Star Lancer. It is a ship that came out of nowhere. Now MISC, Aegis, Anvil, Origin, RSI, have a very flushed out lineup of starships. And I don't know if this was needed, but it is surely well accepted. I, I think this is gonna be one of those ships that people just jump all over. The next ship we see is a Starfarer Gemini. And since there's two Starfarers here, we're just gonna talk about this one, it's military. This is the one that refuels your capital ships and your smaller corvettes and frigates. It's an amazing ship in that it was one of the first really big ships that we received, but it may need a little bit of help because I couldn't get the ramp to come down so I could go inside of it. Now, this is one of my favorite ships to talk about in a different way. That cargo bay is so big, I envision this ship being just stuck somewhere off in the pyro area and it being a, well, being like a brewery, right? Because 
These big giant containers contain fuel, right? But maybe they could just contain beer. And you can make yourself your very own brewery, right? And then sell the beer over Pyro. Or set up tables inside and have a restaurant. I think it would be great. Well, anyway, I've been pushing that for years. I know it's not going to get done. But the gold passes really have to be done on some of these older ships to bring them up to standard. And I am really, really, really disappointed that CIG made so many ships before their gameplay was in or before they had their design language for Star Citizen as a whole, not just the individual companies completed because these single entrance through the rear end ships are just, ah, oh, another body. Now these next two starships are going to be some of the favorites of many people. Now I'm not going to talk about the whole off to the left because I have one and I love it. I think it's a wonderful ship. It was useless until 324, but it's one of my favorite ships to take out for hauling right now in the small category, right? Rookie and junior smalls. Anyway, you have the whole C and you have the prospector. Oh my Lord, what wonderful ships these are. Now, the prospector is your beginner mining ship and it is a wonderful way to make money early in the game. The hull C is that mid-range. It looks huge, but there's still a hull D and a hull E after this. The hull E being almost as big as an Idris. This is a tremendously large ship, especially when it's fully expanded and could haul tons of cargo. Now, this is probably going to be most useful going interstellar. So as Pyro opens up and then in a year or so when we get Castra and we get Nyx and we get Terra, Things will just get better, right? All right, so we're going to go on to the whole A just for one second. I, I told you I love this ship. It's relatively expensive for a starter, and it's not a starter. I would say get yourself the Intrepid. Get yourself the Titan before you get this. So move up from something really inexpensive like a Mustang or an Aurora and then buy the ships in game. But I would say that that's a good midpoint. There are better, but I like it. It's easy to get things on and off of that ship. And it's just different than other ships that people use a lot, like the Cutlass and like the Freelancer, which are still wonderful ships. This next haul will bring us the first starships from Mirai. Now, Mirai has another ship coming in 4.0, the Guardian. But these are going to be the Furies. The Furies are snub nose fighters. Similar to a Merlin or an Archimedes, they need a home base. They need to be launched from something else because they have no quantum drives, which would make using them in any other way, shape or form kind of difficult, if not impossible. They are wonderful ships. I've flown them around. Essentially what they are are flying turrets and you have a number of different versions here. So these variants are just the normal fighter. This is the snub nose fighter. Put it in a Star Lancer tack, put a bunch of them in other ships and you'll have a bunch of fun. This is the racer. The racer I have not flown and I've not done racing for a while as I said yesterday, but it really has a nice look to it. Man, they make these things, but this is about as small as you can make a starship, right? And I bet you if they get hit, they just crumble, right? All right, so this last one is kind of like one that I just look at them and say, really, you already had missiles on the other one. You're gonna just send out a missile ship. And then I have to remember, these are essentially just mobile turrets. That's it. So this would be a mobile missile turret. Moving on, we have the Reliance. And I'm not sure if they're going to remain MISC after their gold passes. To me, they look more Mirai because they have such Xion technology built into them. These are the mini B-Wings. They kind of give you like that feeling. But what they were originally intended for is to be early multiplayer gameplay. So you have two seats in there, and I'm not sure if you still get stuck in there. I mean, you used to be you used to get stuck in, in the chairs in this because the wings would not rotate. But nonetheless, this is the Tana. The Tana is kind of a defense fighter that a militia would purchase. Small, unaligned planets that may need to have a defense force. Now, 
I, I loved flying this thing around. I had the core, which has six spots for one CU boxes, so six CU. And it, it was kind of fun, but I haven't flown this in a very long time. And although they look greatly upgraded, I think they still need their gold pass, but I'm not sure about them. There's four versions of this. You have the core, you have the Tana, you have the Sen, and then you have a news van, which I, I am so happy that Star Citizen does not release ships that have no gameplay attached to it. Wait, did I just lie? I know they don't do it anymore, but almost all the ships that are here were released without gameplay and it had to be updated to support it. So there are a couple of variants here that are just useless. So I'm going to stop with the core or maybe I'll run over to the other two just to show you the differences. This is your starter, I guess, hauler. It doesn't have any place to sleep or anything. Think of this as a box fan. It's not a ship that's meant to go long distances. Maybe it's one that you're going to start off doing courier missions in. But even so, I, I would just skip this and go right to that brand new ugly duckling. The Intrepid. These next two variants, we're going to run around real quick. This is the Mako, it's the news van, and I, I see a common thing in the Star Citizen universe that everything has to have combat capabilities. So here's a news van. They're supposed to be given like permission to go and like film things, but yet they still have guns. I guess in time of war, the correspondents did carry rifles, uh, but, but still, nonetheless, this no gameplay, it's kind of cool. Expect when the gameplay comes in that this is gonna to be totally different inside. It's supposed to be able to record things like, think about the Daymar Rally and taking one of these over there and using it as a drone that flies overhead and just shoots the rally from above. It, it could be cool. I don't know how they're gonna do it. I don't know when they're gonna do it, but the ship is in the game, even though you can't use it for what it was meant to be. I owned one of these because of my show and I gave it up. I melted it because I, I, I don't see how this is even going to be relevant in the future. They should have just made drones that you could fly around. But nonetheless, this is here and maybe it will be fun in the end. I don't know. Now, science gameplay ends with the tremendously large Endeavor, which we'll look at the hollow viewer later. But it begins with this tiny little ship, the Sen. So this is the Reliant Sen. Again, don't know what that is going to look like in the early game. The ship was made to do it. It's got lots of sensors and lots of what looks like scanners on it. And I have no idea how this is going to work in the game later on. But it might be a great starter ship once that job, once that occupation, once that role is fleshed out. In the final hall on the top floor, we have our freelancers. And there are four of them. Two on one side. You have the Fat Lancer in the middle, and you have the MIS on the right. The standard Freelancer was one of the first ships I really loved moving up to. It's amazing. It has good combat capability. It has an airlock that used to let you get stuck in and that you couldn't get out of, which doesn't happen anymore. And it carries a it, it carries enough cargo to begin a cargo mission, but it's a multi-role, right? You can bring a bunch of friends, do bunker runs with it. It has enough weapons to hold its own. And it comes in so many different variants. Well, it comes in four variants, but completely different. This is the DUR, the DUR, and it has a refinery inside. It has extra fuel tanks and amazing scanners. And this would be something that you would bring along with your Carrick. And once the Carrick finds a jump hole to a system and does its thing, this one could go and get down to the planets, get to the nebulas, whatever it might be, and do a little bit more work on the scanning of that system. Now, the refinery, I, I don't know how it would get the items in here if, like the Galaxy or like the Odyssey, which I think those two have that, that it's going to be able to mine also. I don't see that. We just have to wait and see in the future. Now, if you like rock mining, this is the ship for you. Now, you can bring rock in a number of other ships, too. But this one would have more than enough room for your rock and a bunch of boxes inside that you could just keep on offloading your mined goods into. 
this ship, I, I, I rented it right away and I'll do a little cargo run in the end just to give you an idea. This is a, this is a wonderful ship for you to get to in that mid game. Or I should say the late early game. Mid game is gonna be tremendously long. And this is the late early game. Now this one always makes me laugh with its name. It's the MISC Freelancer MIS. <laughs> so this one is for those of you that want a military career. I don't suggest it for anybody else because what this is, is just a powerhouse missile platform that sits off behind the front lines or in between some big capital ships or larger ships and just targets fighters or medium-sized craft and just launches missile after missile after missile. It gives up a lot of cargo space for that. It gives up a lot of the, I guess, the personality of the freelancer. It, it really does look very military when you're inside. It's separated into three compartments. This middle compartment over here is where all the missiles are housed and they're put into these auto loaders. You would stack a bunch of missiles up back here in different boxes and then empty them and pull them and then just place them into the auto loaders. You still have room for a little bit of cargo in the center section, but CIG made these cargo areas so ridiculously stupid it's hard to get the boxes through there without being frustrated. And again, all the cockpits kind of look the same. And be careful when you go through the door. Sometimes if you click, you're going to climb a ladder and then it's going to take you a little bit to get out of that seat right now or out of your bed. All right, we're going back through. CIG, please change the shape or make the doors bigger so we can, in the future, get boxes in and out of there faster or Put a freight elevator right in that area. No, nope, you can't because it's not big enough. <laughs> we, we just need better ways to put boxes in that center section. We're going to look at this just one last time. If you are going to get a prospector, this is what you'll be doing. Filling those saddlebags on the side, bringing them over to an expanse, getting them refined, and then taking off. As we go to the lower level of the showroom floor, we find the Mirai Razors. They used to be MISC, which is why I'm hoping that the Reliant gets relabeled too. But these are your racers, right? They're, they're amazing. One's a drag racer, one's just an all out regular racer. And the last one, the one that we're looking at right now, which is the first one, is a stealth fighter. I think each and one of these is going to be a great ship for the people that want to buy them. They're very expensive. I know that some of you like to spend money on things that you love the look of. If you like this, just like the M50, it's a wonderful ship for racing. It's a wonderful ship for light fighter. Um, I'm not into this gameplay right now, but I know that people are and they really love this. I guess we're gonna finish up in the hollow hall and this is the expanse. There is no gameplay for it yet. It could be a hospital ship. It could be a science ship. It could be a farming ship. There's so many different modules that you could have for this ship and CIG just have not worked out how modularity really works. Currently, there's a different variant for each module that you want. And if you really needed to do that for here, there would be dozens of different variants that they'd have to create for the ship. This is the expanse. It is the refinery. This is where you are going to bring things if you're working with a friend in tandem and mining in the prospector. Pretty cool looking, pretty small. Um, there is something called the Fortune that should be coming out soon. It was leaked and that will be a salvager, I believe. But this ship is a refiner. That's all it is. And I think that would be great for people that like the industrial gameplay. This is the ship that I bought. It's the second variant of the Star Lancer. The last one would be the BLD for building bases. But this one is, I guess it would be like a command and control ship. So if you think of how they have those command and control ships in the Navy, this would be what that is. It has a small hangar for a Mirai Fury. And of course, this is my, this is the ship I'm waiting for. This is the Odyssey. The Odyssey is just a huge exploration ship. Tremendously big, tremendously large hangar, mining. It can, it has a refinery on it. It's the one that when the Carrick finds something, it goes in and sets up shop and then finds everything else there. 
this is something I can't wait to see. And it's kind of been hinted that it might be coming at some point because they said they're going to be working on large MISC ships in the future. Um, I'm hoping that this is one of them. So this is day three of IAE. I'm sorry it's coming late. I work a lot during the holiday. I will have day four out early, but the rest of them are probably going to be a day late, but not a dollar short, I hope. Anyway, this is the garb I'm wearing today. I should have worn it yesterday, which is the Aegis garb. Make sure you're in civvies when you come here, just in case you get that bug that happens occasionally that if you're wearing a helmet, you die of asphyxiation. Folks, if you really, really love this game and you're brand new, look down below in my description and there is a referral code that will get you an extra 5,000 UEC and might get you some extras in the future if you use it to purchase a ship you do not need to purchase a ship to fly right now it is free fly which is why the performance is so bad but nonetheless i welcome in all of you new and old people and the returning viewers thank you so much i don't know if three videos in three days means i'm back but we'll see what happens in another 20 days if i have 10 or 12 videos up by then you'll know i'll be back for good folks if you like the video please click the thumbs up button below if you want to subscribe, please click on the subscribe button and be sure to click the notification bell and choose all to get notified of all my future videos. And with that said, you all be safe out there and I'll talk to you soon. Ooh, alien ships. Oh, I hate that day. Thank you so much for watching my videos. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking in the button in the upper left. You can support the channel by going to Patreon by clicking the button in the upper right. On the left, you'll see my latest video, and on the right, you'll see a video that YouTube thinks you will like.